You know, I got the stem cells in my shoulder. I had yeah. my stem How's that doing? Well, we should let everybody know. This is the place that's in Tijuana. It's run by Scotty Nelson, Ed Clay. Yeah, Ed Clay. He's the man. Scotty Nelson, the man. They're in Tijuana, and they got like a on the beach. It's like it's a nice part of Tijuana. It isn't. It isn't like the the favela looking part of t Tijuana. It's it's by the. I didn't know Tijuana had a beach. I showed him like, damn, this is nice. And uh, they they did. First and foremost, they were a cancer hospital, and then they started doing stem cells. How did they start? Ed Clay is the kind of guy that just wants just to do the best at anything he's doing. He just wants the best. And he was involved in, um, you know, healing people with uh, different herbs and different kind of plants and stuff. And then that evolved into trying to come up with the, not come up, but combine all the best cancer treatments in the world and combine them and use them together. Did he do it because he knew somebody with cancer? His mom was really, um, she had rheumatoid arthritis and uh, it just, I don't know, the whole, like I forget the whole story. I had him on my, uh, I did this podcast and we talked about it, but long story short, Ed Clay and Scotty Nelson are two of the, the most awesome people I've ever met, man. And Fucking great guys. They, yeah. Once I, once they started, um, you remember when Mel Gibson was on your podcast and yeah. he was talking about Panama and how yeah, they're doing Yeah, Dr. Like, Neil Reardon. Yeah, all that yeah. stuff. So... Ed Clay is working with one of those guys. They brought the stem cells to Tijuana, and um, they just they just started slowly, and then just started working on jujitsu athletes and MMA athletes. You know, test it out. And this guy, the guy they brought in from Panama, he's like he knew he was like right in it. You know, and um, he, I went down there, and they and Ed's like, dude, come down because I had shoulder surgery. They reattached my bicep to my shoulder. They did. They did something on my ro rotator cuff. My shoulder was fucking jacked. And um, it took, you know, after like six months or something of healing, I started rolling again, and I, I came back too soon. And um, one of my students, Michael Plaster, who videotapes my online series, Mastering the, the System, he was videotaping me doing this overhook. Uh, it's called the, the Cobra Clinch, and it's like an overhook, but with... Um, it, it's I'd have to show you on the mats, but it's a it's a great way to hold an overhook hard to pull out and I taught it I taught it and he's videotaping it and then afterwards we rolled he gets me in it and I couldn't get my arm out he swept me he mounted me in the mount it works too and I couldn't get my arm out for like five minutes he was just seeing how long he could hold it I couldn't and it was my bad shoulder and yeah. sometimes when you tweak a knee or you tweak an elbow, you don't feel it till the next day, and you're like, yeah. oh shit. Usually when you pop a knee, you don't feel it till the next day. Right. Sometimes, unless it's brutal. That, right after we rolled, dude, I couldn't move my shoulder. I'm like, dude, my fucking surgery shoulder is fucked. It felt, dude, it felt like I just had surgery. You know that feeling when you can't move it? Did you get an MRI? No, but I just felt like it was just fucked. And uh, stayed off it for a couple months, and it just wouldn't heal right. And I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have to go back in and fucking get a, another surgery on this thing. And that's when Ed Clay said, dude, before you do that, just come down, let us sh shoot you up with some stems and see what happens. He goes, you have nothing to lose, just come down. And I'm like, okay. So I went down and uh, man, they just, they got one big syringe and stuck it in the back of my shoulder. Just one big one, boom, and went bam. And I'm not gonna lie, I was, Painful as fuck. I was screaming. I was in this hospital room and I was screaming. <laughs> Remember when I did ayahuasca or DMT? Yes. Remember when I did DMT and I was like screaming at the yeah. top of my I was screaming just like that. It hurt so much. I could, it, it, dude, it, it, it was uh, excruciating. But it worked, man. My shoulder came back and it's like, a, you know, a few months later, I forget the exact timeline, but a few months later, it's 100% now. Um, so uh, then I hurt my other shoulder tore my labrum, stayed. I didn't know I tore the labrum, labrum for a while. I just knew something was off, like, oh shit. I couldn't pick anything up. Like, at the end of every day in class, like, after we mop everything up, we put these dirty, wet mop heads into a plastic bag, and then I test it that way. I go like this, like, oh fuck, it hurts, fuck. And then my good shoulder, I could do it all day. But that's how I know every night I test it. Bam, oof, something's wrong. And I didn't do shit, I hadn't been rolling. The last, the last, 
four or five years, man, my rolling has been so sporadic. I'm, you know, I had back surgery in 2016. That was massive. And then shoulder surgery, knee surgery. And then now my good shoulder's fucked up. And I'm just giving it time, giving it months and months. Started getting into yoga, doing yoga every morning. I go, maybe yoga's going to fix it. And it didn't fix it. And then... Ed Clay said, come on down. We got it. We got it down now. They, they, the whole system, they got it wired. Because when, when they did this shoulder, they had just started it. And it fixed it. They go, come on down before you get surgery. Come on down. So I went on down. So now they got the system down. You go down. You, uh, they, get, you get a, they get your hotel. It's all included in the package. You have a hotel in San Diego, uh, in the marina. It's beautiful. They pick you up. You stay there at the hotel. They pick you up. So you stay in San Diego? You stay in San Diego. So you don't stay in Tijuana? No, no, initially. Initially. You land in San Diego. They pick you up on a Monday morning. You come in Sunday night, spend the night. You wake up Monday morning. They drive you across the border. Um, Then you stay. There's a nice ass street in Tijuana that looks like LA. It doesn't look like the Tijuana. I I hear like the cartel just fixed it all up and everything, but it looks nice. There's a street and there's a Marriott there. It looks like you could be anywhere in the United States. It doesn't look like the TJ you're thinking. The TJ you're thinking does exist, but you know, it's there's certain spots there. It's really nice. Watching a lot of this. yeah, cartel violence is going yeah. on in Tijuana now. Yeah, none of that's going on by the beach where they're mm-hmm. at. So, how um, big is Tijuana? I don't know. I don't know the dimensions. I mean, is it like big, like Burbank? Like, is it big, like? Uh, I would say. How big is it? I don't know. I have no idea. But it ain't small. They got some good areas too, and that. And then you you get there Monday. Um, you go get your MRIs right away. Whatever injuries you have, you go get your MRIs. The first time I went, I didn't get an MRI. They just said, they just shot me up. They were just, exp- they were just trying it out. Now they got it down, dude. They got it, they got it down to a science. Now they, they do so much that I wish Ed Clay could explain it. But 